notched on the gridiron in September. Perfected in the magic of March. For the fans who love the crunch of the pads, prefer a dunk and expect nothing but the best. It's Bigger Tech. Here's Steve Dace. Greetings and welcome to our final episode of 2022. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas to all of you. I am Steve Dace. He is my co-host and absolutely never partner. The one and only Aaron McIntyre. And Aaron, can you smell it? Bowl fever. Catch it. How you doing, brother? I am doing uh, very well. And yes, it's, it's bowl fever season, but as an Iowa fan and a lot of other teams right now, it's, uh, it's transfer portal season and keeping track of all of that, although things, at least on this front, have died down a little bit. Uh, we got another Michigan ca captain assigned to our team, but I've uh, been a little bit more interested in that than I have been in years past. But yeah, when the time comes, I'll, uh, I'll definitely flip on the uh, television and, and watch me some more college football. Like I said last week, if you put a gun to my head, I guess I'll watch some more college football. I was afraid you were going to opt out, actually. Opt out of the bowl show. You know, take your uh, talents to South Beach or to the next level. Mm -hmm. So this time of year, you never know who's coming and going, playing. Now you've got, uh, you know, the first time we've had an unlimited transfer portal, right? Uh, during a bowl season, Zany. there's over a thousand players yep. in there right now. So you never know. Even with broadcasters, who knows who's even going to show up to do the actual games, let alone play in them at this point. Yeah, and it's, I mean, I'm sure we'll get into this in the offseason a little bit more, but uh, you had this, uh, there's been a few people who have put this up, but you had this on Bigger Ten as well. Give or take about 40% of those who enter, enter the transfer portal actually find, I think, is it a scholarship or just a place somewhere yes. else to play? A scholarship somewhere else. A scholarship else. somewhere Since else. Since we opened it up in 2019, roughly 40% of the football players have found a scholarship with another FBS program. Th yeah. those, aren't, those aren't great odds. And I saw a meme the other day. It's like uh, some player gets into the transfer. I don't want to be the third string uh, backup uh, quarterback on such and such team. Get in the transfer portal, you're now number 3,033, mm. you know. I mean, that's an exaggeration, but that the point still, still stands there. Well, let's get to the games. We are going to break down the non-playoff games first, and then after the break, we'll break the playoff games where the Big Ten for the first time has not one, but two teams in the college football playoff. So they will get their own segment here later in the program. But let's take these in the order of how compelling I find the matchup. So I'm the one that determined the order. Let us begin with the guaranteed rate bowl. I love that uh, graphic, by the way. Yeah, let's do a rating ten, on a scale of 1 to 10. What are these graphics? What do you give these graphics? I'm going to give that a solid 8. Yep, I like it quite a bit. That's where I am. 7.5, yeah. 8, something like that. Okay. Uh, so we have a game that sounds good. I mean, these have been two of the more successful program emergings in the last few decades of college football. Barry Alvarez and what he orchestrated at Wisconsin, now they're completely abandoning that. I mean, Luke Fickle going to the Phil Luongo offense and everything else. I mean, it's a, it's a whole new ball game in Wisconsin, but that's to come after this one. Uh, I don't know who the quarterback will be. Graham Mertz is in the portal right now. Right. Oklahoma State's outstanding quarterback, Spencer Sanders, he's in the portal right now, as are several other Oklahoma State players. So, you know, Mike Gundy kind of did for Oklahoma State what Barry Alvarez did for Wisconsin football, obviously. So in a lot of years, this would be like maybe the most compelling non-playoff game uh, or, or Rose Bowl matchup in a Big Ten Bowl allotment. But we have no idea who the hell is playing for either one of these teams. So that's why we lead off with it. What and, do you think? Uh, Braylon Allen has been a little bit coy. It sounds like he's coming back to Wisconsin. Right. Uh, that's the latest that I've heard, but nothing like totally official yet. So that's a little odd. I still think that there is enough juice and enough excitement on the Wisconsin side more than there is on Oklahoma State. I, I would not bet money at all on this game. But I think, I think Wisconsin is favored right now, and I think that they should win. But... I just, again, I, I don't, Oklahoma State has had such a weird season. Wisconsin has had a strange season as well. And like you said, don't know who's playing. So still going to watch it, but uh, I don't, I, you know, I have no idea how to handicap it. That may be a familiar refrain with numerous games. Still going to watch it. Yeah, where, where you don't know who's playing. And if you want to bet, it's probably more of a live betting situation. See yeah. who is, who, see who yep. actually lines up. And if, you know, you got to wonder 
if it's 10 nothing early, what kind of will does the other team have at yep. that point? We'll see you next year, right, on the flip side. So, all right, let's go to the next matchup. Uh, this is the Pinstripe Bowl. This is actually, I'm going to give, I think this one's even better. I think it's nice. I think they're trying to do too much. I'm I'm six out of ten on this graphic. I'm gonna if I give the last one a seven, I'm giving this one an eight. I like this one a lot, and and this sounds like a game that ought to be played at, at the Pinstripe Bowl. Um, Missouri, I'm sorry, Missouri, Minnesota, and Syracuse. And yeah, I know Syracuse is a dome team, but if you watched them this year, they play a lot like a Big yep. Ten team. Okay. They do. And so this is going to be an outdoor slugfest there at Brisk Yankee Stadium. Minnesota loves playing in this kind of weather and in these kinds of games on a slow grass field, right? So I kind of feel like this feels to me, both teams have good defenses, like first one to 21 kind of wins this game. What do you think? Yeah, maybe this is, maybe I'm off base here. I think this may be one of the first times it's actually played in the afternoon, the Pinstripe Bowl. Hmm. I seem to remember when Iowa played in it, it was at night, but maybe that's just because it was the the middle of winter. It's Eastern time zone that gets dark at like 4.30. Yeah, so, um, (laughs) but uh, maybe, uh, maybe it'll be a little bit, uh, because that's one of the, one of the main things is like New York in late December, but I am interested in this game as well. I think it was last week or the week before I said, if you were, if we were playing, uh, would you rather? Would you rather be a fan of Minnesota? And I can't remember who the other team was. I would, I would say you could make a case in the West to be a fan of Minnesota, just because you've got stability, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know you've got a, a coach who has shown he can actually coach with some degree of, uh, well, like I said, stability, and and so I I think he'll be able to get his guys up for this game. But uh, on the other side as well, like you said, uh, with Syracuse, they play a similar style of ball. So I don't really see this being a track meet. Having said that, it's probably going to be a track meet. You just never know with with, uh, with bowl games. But I am interested in this game. Uh, the only part of it is it's the middle of the afternoon, so I don't know if I'll actually be able to watch. Uh, good running back match, running back yep. matchup here. You have uh, Mo Ibrahim for Minnesota, Sean Tucker for Syracuse. That's assuming they play... I have no idea. I mean, seriously, we're at the point now, if it's like sleet and slick out there, I could see guys just yank themselves like right before kickoff. So (laughs) just, I know the whole thing is, you know, you bet early to get the best number and the closing line value. You're a fool if you're doing that in these bowl games. You're an absolute fool if you're doing that. Okay. Get the best number all you want. If you have the best number all you want, if the guys that you actually bet on aren't playing in the game, who freaking cares? Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's move to the next bowl game. Uh, This is the Duke's Mayo bowl. I'm at a nine out of 10 on this graphic. Really? Yeah. Love it. He's got the Duke's Mayo jar up in the air. Like it's a football. Huh? I think that's creative. Uh, I'm a six. What? what yeah, do you, it's okay. Oh, you, you don't like mayonnaise. That's I'm not why. a huge mayo guy yeah. either. Mayo guy. No, I'm not. I, I, I like Miracle Whip, but that's not real mayonnaise. No. Uh, but this is where you take the mayonnaise bath if you win, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we've got an old, uh, old school ACC matchup here, Maryland against NC State. And you talk about clashes. NC State has a terrific defense, yep. but their offense, since Devin Leary got hurt, can't move the ball across the street consistently. Maryland ain't great at stopping people. Offensively, of course, a lot of firepower. Um, I actually like NC State in this one. I liked Oklahoma State in the first one. I agree with you. I like Minnesota in the pinstripe. But I like NC State. I think especially there, the games in Charlotte, they get a little uh, home field advantage there. And I think there's a a coaching advantage for NC State uh, against Maryland. But what do you think? No, I, I, I don't think that's a bad case at all. I just see everyone almost everyone picking NC State, at least in some of the previews that I've read anyway. And whenever everybody's on one side, I True. usually just try to go to the other side. Yep. So for that reason alone, I'll go with, with Maryland. But it uh, should, should be a fun game to watch. I haven't seen or heard uh, any major uh, sit-outs from Maryland's side. Um, so I, I, I would hope that this would be a, a, a good game and that Maryland would be able to move the ball uh, at least a little bit on NC State. Good defense, uh, notwithstanding. Maryland does currently have more players in the transfer portal than any other Big Ten team. A lot of them, though, are guys who had extra COVID years or 2019 guys, which means they probably got passed over by younger players with the way that uh, Maryland's been recruiting there for the last couple of years. Let's go to the Citrus Bowl next. This kind of looks like the cover uh, of a media guy. I'm at a two out of ten. Yeah, I'm good at no creativity whatsoever. And especially when you and it's not Purdue's fault. Okay. But Jeff Brom's not the head coach anymore, and there he is on the graphic. <laughs> yeah. Aiden O'Connell just announced this afternoon he's not playing in the game. 
Charlie He's Jones, too. Charlie Jones, too. Drew Brees is coaching for Purdue. Did you hear this? I did. He will yeah. be the he'll he'll be the the celebrity interim coach for the Boilermakers <laughs> in this game. Celebrity interim coach. I don't know what how about that. Called. What else do you call celebrity it? Celebrity interim. No, that's yeah. a perfect name. That's all it is. What is he going to do? Right. What's he going to do? He's just a celebrity. Hello. And and LSU, I think, I think LSU is going to drill him because I think LSU Agreed. senses that they're a twenty three team. Yeah. And that they've got a you know a good deal a good portion of their core players coming back next year, and that uh, they don't like the way the season ended with the the losses to A and M and then in the SEC championship game, and that this can kind of be a springboard for them where they are probably thinking they're a preseason top ten team in twenty twenty three I would guess, and so I, I I Purdue was phenomenal last year in the Music City Bowl with no uh, Carl Loftus. Who's the outstanding receiver whose name I forgot? David Bell. David Bell, thank you. And they go I'm and beat... I'm not going to forget his name for a long yeah, time. Yeah, if you're an Iowa fan, yeah. you're right. If you, They go and beat Tennessee in what's basically a road game, right? Yep. But their core has been gutted here. The head coach is gone. I, I just... And the, and the hire they made, I'm fascinated. They, they went the, uh, the complete opposite. They went from a grizzled offensive... Wonder, you know, whiz kid play caller to a young defensive wonder kid who's never been a head coach before. But we'll talk about that during the offseason. But this just smacks me to me of, you know, running into a buzzsaw here for the Boilermakers. Your offense is opting out. Your offense, that's that's basically uh, Aiden O'Connell and Charlie Jones is yeah. opting out. I don't know how much further your analysis needs to go than that. This might be an exception to what we just talked about. If you're trying to get the best number, just take just take uh, LSU, I, I, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know really. This is one of those, like, don't overthink it type of things to me. All right, next on the list, we both agree on that one. This is cool. I like I can't this. Can't see anything. I kind of washed out. I like the airbrush. See, you didn't grow up in the '80s. I like the airbrush look quite a bit, actually. I'm going to give this one a good seven. I like it. I'll give it four and a half out of ten. This is uh, the Iowa matchup against Kentucky, the Music City Bowl. You got the shot of Broadway, you know, yeah. uh, overlaid on a Hawkeye football player. It's rematch. These stuff. Yeah. So, so last year. So this is the lowest total in a bowl game I have ever seen. It's 31. The last I looked, and it's a record, by the way. It is okay. Yeah. Last year, Will Levis played for Kentucky, and Kentucky had Wandale Robinson, an NFL receiver, playing out of his mind in this freaking game. Yeah, Iowa had a, a fully loaded team, and it was twenty to seventeen. All right, and it was in Florida where the weather wasn't going to be a factor. Weather can absolutely be a factor late yep. December in Nashville. No Will Levis for Kentucky. No Wandale Robinson for Kentucky. He's a New York Giant now. We, 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 you and I surmised all year how bad Alex Padilla must be that he could not beat out Spencer Petras with how poorly he was playing, right? Well, what's the third and fourth string quarterbacks yep. that Iowa look like? Iowa's had a couple of other receivers and running backs hop into the portal as well. I mean, I think, I, I think I'm playing the under, like under 31. If it was 37 when these teams were playing at a high level and were fully loaded in a, on a fast track last year, I, I would think maybe the first one to 17 wins this game this year. I think I might go under. I think this is actually one of the most interesting games, bowl games. Of the bowl I agree. Season. It is. A, it's a fascinating rock if, fight. I agree. Iowa and uh, Brian Ferentz or Kirk Ferentz, don't you just Carson May or Joey Labus? Unfortunate last name. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> dude, the first time I heard the washed up walk ons, the first mention of Joey Labus, they messed it up. No, at least they didn't. that. Yes, they did, and it was. You <laughs> could tell it was not on purpose. Don't mean to light those guys up. I love the podcast. Here's what I'll tell you, though. I'll tell you right now. If that was your name, don't mess with that dude. He will kick your <laughs> ass because he had to fight his way out of several schoolrooms growing up, man. Yeah. Several recesses. Do not turn your back on Joey Labus. That would be my advice to you, right so there, straight up. If yes. it's Joey Labus or Carson May, I think those are the two that are duking it out. Who is a true freshman? The latter, by the way. Don't you just, don't you just like have them learn ten plays and just. Well, with all plays. due respect, brother, I've been covering this team the entire Ferentz era. They have to know the entire offense. That is the that is the entire offense. All right, it's it's inside zone left, outside inside zone. zone right, outside zone left, outside zone right. Waggle off of the outside zone the naked other way. Boot. Yeah, naked boot. I mean, good point. It is kind of ten plays. Touche. Touche. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um. So I I have no idea, and I have no idea what Kentucky has behind 
uh, behind their star quarterback, well, behind their quarterback and their star running back. So the forecast is pain. The Sickos <laughs> Committee, I don't know if you follow them on Twitter. No. I just see them retweeted by a bunch of people. You know, the Sickos Committee, they are just, their their whole shtick is just following terrible college football as like, as like, a, a pursuit, like a fun pursuit. Oh, I love this. this I need to num- follow this. Number, Absolutely. Number one game, I, I believe, of the of this season for them. Is this, do you remember, I had a poker night with my buddies during the Cheez-It Bowl about four years ago. And I think it was, was it Cal and TCU where there were combined 11 interceptions or something in that game? Do you remember that bowl? Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was so awful, it was wonderful. Yeah. Okay? Yep, yep. And, I mean, we couldn't stop watching it. We we, we, we stopped dealing hands. We were mesmerized by the calamity yeah. that was unfolding before us. I could see something like that magnificence happening here. I could not that to that level. I, I don't think they're going to be... I don't think they're going to be airing, airing it out. Just Will there the be 11 passes that could be intercepted? Yes. Now, that's yes. a better prop. Yeah. <laughs> Over, under, on uh, pass attempts in the game. <laughs> Ten and a half. Ugh. If you have a sports book dumb enough to put that prop out there, make sure they're your betting home in the future. Yeah. All right? Because yeah. they're, so, they're giving away money. Yes. So I think this game ends in a tie. That's the only way it can. That's, a, that's my forecast. For that them. would be phenomenal. Yep. They just, just both cancel the two-point ag- yep. conversion over time. Both coaches just agree. They just agree yeah. it needs yeah. to end in a tie. Yeah. All right. Let's go to what is now called the ReliaQuest Bowl, formerly known as, for many years, the Outback Bowl, which was one of, if you couldn't get into the, you know, the big wigs, Big Ten teams would fight like the Dickens to get into this one. They loved this game. All right. And so no more blooming onions. I don't know what you get at the ReliaQuest Bowl. I mean, do you get, you get a like free a, cybersecurity audit? Right. You get a VPN or yeah. something. I don't know what they give you. Not exactly a blooming onion, but it is uh, Illinois in this game. Uh, and I, I'm trying to remember. Let me look at Mississippi who they, State. Thank you. Mississippi yeah. State is who they are playing. Of course, heavy hearts for the yeah. Bulldogs with the sudden uh, passing of uh, their beloved coach, Mike Leach. Um, that aside, and, and I, you know, I could see that going either way. I mean, I, I remember in 2006, Bo died the night, the day before the Michigan Ohio state yeah. game when it was one versus two. And it, it almost seemed like it was destined that Michigan was going to win, but you carry that heavy burden into that game. I, on the other hand, there are times that it is that added extra oomph. So you can't handicap that. Here's yeah. what you can't handicap. This is a great matchup for Illinois. It is a dink and dunk is in space passing offense yep. against an absolutely outstanding coverage secondary. Now, they're without their Vunderkid in Ryan Walters, but now Mississippi State, sadly and tragically, is also without its uh, in Mike Leach. It would have been fun as hell to watch Ryan Walters and Mike Leach right lock headsets mm-hmm. for three hours and try to you know out chest the other. We're not going to get a chance to see that that, um, but. It's a, I think, stylistically, it's a very good matchup for Illinois, I think. Agreed. I think the analog... Oh, by the way, this graphic, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. It's, oh, it's okay. Oh, the graphic's a 5 to me. I'm not yeah, a big fan. I'm, I'm fine with it. I mean, it's different. It's not trying to do too much. It kind of captures Tampa, but um, I, I'm going with Mississippi State in this game. The one analog game this season that we've seen from a team that does what Mississippi State does is Purdue against Illinois. And Purdue, in a must-win game for them, yes, uh, was able to find a way against uh, against Illinois. So I will, go with, I will go with Mississippi State. It's hard to see how the death of Mike Leach translates here. And like you said, don't try to, don't try to handicap that. But if we're just going off of what we've seen, I think I would give a slight edge to, to Mississippi State. I would give an edge to a slight edge to Illinois, but I'm I mean, I take this game off the board now with the leash mm-hmm. factor and probably wait and see where Mississippi State was, uh, where their headspace was once we got into the game. I love I in and just as a quick aside on Mike Leach as well, all of the videos of him going off on random topics right. and things like that. The Hilarious. wedding the wedding one might be the favorite one yeah. I've seen, but yeah. Hilarious, but I saw a video of him when he was at uh, Oklahoma. Just breaking down X's and O's. Yeah. And the dude just makes it seem so simple. He even basically for, brought the air raid to college football. He did. Yeah. He just makes and it made, made it seem so accessible and simple as well. Definitely a, a genius. When Bob Stoops got the job at Oklahoma, he was defensive coordinator at Florida. When he got the job at Oklahoma, he hired Mike Leach to be his OC. And the reason why, he said, I'm going to go out and hire the guy whose offense I had the worst time scheming against when I was in the SEC. And it was Mike Leach when he was at Kentucky. So he brought him with him to Oklahoma. So... 
pretty high praise. Finally, ten out of ten. Oh, that's that's pretty. Yeah, I mean, I love that. That's beautiful. And here's the thing: it's beautiful in, in typical Penn State fashion. Like it's uniforms, it's logos, it's 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 Minimalism. beautiful in its, in its yeah. understatedness. Yes, Minimalism. Yeah. just the the endless you know uh, garden of roses there, the singular Nittany Lion, and the the Arroyo Seco with the 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 Rose Bowl there in the backdrop. I mean, that's dude. You should if Penn State wins the game, they should be printing this out with the score and oh, selling yeah. it as a as you know novelty as a item. as a novelty yeah. item. That's a phenomenal portrait there so you and i both agree 10 out of 10 that's phenomenal let's get to the game itself uh, i i don't like this matchup for penn state utah was in this game a year ago a lot of these exact same players narrowly lost to ohio state in a game where jackson smith and jigma was literally the third last son of freaking krypton and they still almost utah almost won this game they have you have to think they have this circled a lot of these exact same guys are back from that game the way that they played against USC uh and 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 this is not going to be the case of a physical Big 10 team against a Pac-12 team Utah is a Big 10 team yep. in the Pac-12 and i i think that Utah thought that 2022 was its year and it, I mean, they listen, they won the friggin' Pac-12 and went to the Rose Bowl. But I think that they thought this was going to be their playoff year, and it wasn't. I think next year is Penn State's playoff year. Um, I think they've overachieved a bit with a soft schedule down the stretch to get to this 10-2 and record and this Rose Bowl bid. I hate to say it, man, because we're bigger 10, but I like Utah in this game. Sean Clifford, is he playing or uh, is he sitting out here? I'm, I don't, from what I've heard, he is playing in the yeah, game. Yeah. I've heard I've heard a couple of different rumors, but uh, I, I think I I don't I don't really know how to how to. Why, why would see Sean this. Clifford? I, I know I know what you're thinking, but if he's watching, Sean, why would you sit out? Yeah, you're not. I mean, when, you're when's not the going. XFL draft, yeah. bro? Play the freaking yeah. Rose Bowl. Come yeah. on, man. Anyway, um, so I I don't I'm not quite as confident in you about Utah, although I think the the analysis is solid and seeing what they did to USC it's just like goodness gracious uh that was it would look like a mismatch in the Pac-12 uh championship game about the middle of the second quarter or beginning of the second quarter a quarter onwards so I I um I have a hard time I'm trying to look at any angle I possibly can to make a case for Penn State not saying that there's not one oh sure there is yeah. and uh I I you know I think two things are going to be Two, two things are going to be key. Are you going to be able to develop any sort of running game um, at all early on? If you can't, if you just get stuffed after stuffed after stuffed, and I know this is sounds cliche because it's the same for a lot of teams, but especially against a defense like that. Can you assemble any sort of running game early on? If not, I really do not like their chances whatsoever. But who knows? Who knows? Uh, I think James Franklin may be able to uh, get them up for this game. They should be able to. It's a Rose Bowl game. Get some sort of interesting play. We've saw we've seen James Franklin kind of mix things up on offense just to kind of, uh, you know, uh, just kind of get in the other team's head. So I don't know. I think if they can kind of stay pat with uh, Utah or maybe even build a lead in the first quarter or first uh, quarter and a half, they could they could uh, they could stick around. I don't see I don't see Washington or I don't see Utah blowing them out like USC. USC invites that type of thing with their style of play. So I could see this one being fairly close. To me, the the, the scenario for Penn State to win, um, I mean, they're loaded with young talent. And those guys, some of those guys just click during these 15 bowl practices. And the 2023 Penn State team steps on the field January 1. And I think that's entirely yep. conceivable. But I'm gonna but I, I I just feel like this is kind of a culmination moment for Utah. And frankly, I'd rather have Cam Rising as my quarterback than Sean Clifford. Agreed. And that's a big Agreed. factor too. Yeah. All right, we'll come back and we'll look at the two Big Ten playoff games next. All right, now Aaron to the headliners here on our bigger bigger ten bowl preview, our final episode of 2022. Let us begin. With the college football playoff, the first game in the college football playoff, number three, TCU, against number two, Michigan. Michigan, number two in the college football playoff for the second straight year. Although this year, last time it was an underdog to number three, Georgia. This year, they're a little more than a touchdown favorite over TCU. Last year, Michigan became the first team ever to start the season unranked in the AP poll and make the college football playoff. This year, TCU became the second. 
major clash in styles here, uh, both in terms of the way these two teams play, but also the way that their conferences play. I went over this more in depth on Michigan podcast. I'll give a very brief summation here and then hand it over to you. I think TCU's weapons on the outside and overall athleticism there will give Michigan some problems in this game, specifically or especially between the 20s. I think as the game goes on, however, Michigan's physicality and its advantage there on both sides of the line of scrimmage wears TCU out. Wolverines win. Uh, again, it's a little bit more high scoring than the total and probably probably by right around what the current spread is, which is seven, seven and a half. Uh, I, I have similar analysis. And by the way, this is a one out of 10 graphic right here. Yeah, it's, it's kind of the re- only reason it's not zero out of 10 is because of the next one. Uh, spoiler alert. So I, I think with Michigan, the pressure is on them this year, obviously. I think TCU, not really feeling like they're playing with house money. They earned this spot. I think the key to this game is, does Michigan have any sort of regression anywhere? And it's hard to see that because they haven't really haven't really had many weak spots. One spot, though, that they have seemingly fixed is red zone offense. However, we did see them struggle a little bit against Illinois, at least getting it into the red zone, if not finishing there. I think if they regress in that area, Max, here's some really, really hard hitting analysis on, uh, for you. Max Duggan puts a lot of pressure on your defense. Max Duggan's good. Yeah, he's very good. That's my analysis. It's excellent. I think, I think if you struggle in the red zone like you did earlier in the season and like you did a little bit against Illinois, TCU is a team that can make you pay. Uh, where you, get, you go drive down to the 10, 5-yard line, you got to settle for a field goal. Well, then if you give up a touchdown on the other side, uh, that that's going to, at the very least, keep TCU in the game. And it's not like you have a blowout either. They're going to be, if your final score holds true, 34-27, something like that, they're going to be in the game till the very end. I just think you need to finish in the red zone. You need to have at least a 50% touchdown uh, conversion uh, rate in the, in the red zone. I have no reason to think that you won't, but uh, it's one of those, one of those uh, kind of hidden factors in a game like this where oh, we're moving the ball well uh, you got to finish those drives because Max Duggan as we've seen he can put his entire team on his shoulders and uh, really be the difference the the capital uh, T-H-E the difference in a game then finally the nightcap on New Year's Eve is the Peach Bowl already waving oh, wow, the white flag here that's a zero out of ten that's, that's dreadful number one Georgia but also about a seven-point favorite against number four, Ohio State. Now, uh, if if anybody would have picked Georgia, Ohio State to play in the college football playoff all offseason long, everybody would have been like, oh, yeah, that's obvious. But the way that we got here, no one would have predicted with Ohio State not winning uh, the conference, not winning its own division, and backing into this after USC got smoked by the aforementioned Utah Utes in the Pac-12 championship game. But I kind of think that makes the Buckeyes dangerous here. I mean, to be getting told for a month, you're soft. You can't get punched in the mouth. Um, did we mention, oh, and you're soft again. Uh, getting a second wind, that maybe there's not a lot of pressure on them. At least that's what I was thinking. Until we did Michigan podcast yesterday, yeah. and I talked to Buckeye fan Mark Rogers, the voice of college football here on YouTube, who did his best to talk me out of that position. He seemed to, dude, I'm the guy wearing the Michigan, Mich again shirt, and the Buckeyes seem more pessimistic than me, okay? So I still think a lot of those factors play into this. I also think that Georgia clearly is the number one team in the country, but they're not the generational team they were a year ago, okay? They're, 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 Sounds weird to say. They're just a number one, a typical number one dominant team this time. All right. They're not the NFL farm team that we ridiculously saw a year ago. I think Ohio State, Aaron, is at least going to hang around here with a massive chip on its shoulder. At least hang around. Maybe Georgia wears them down. I will say this, though. And I want to get your take on this, too, because I did mention this to Mark on, on Michigan podcast yesterday. I, I do think. If Ohio State comes out here, gets punched in the mouth, and has no answers and loses by double digits or 22 like they lost to Michigan. Uh Uh-oh. Because Georgia plays the same style Michigan does, just with Ohio State level of recruits. If they don't respond to this twice in a row, going to be a very long, desolate offseason 
in Buckeye Nation, brother. There's a lot riding on this maybe for Ohio State, actually. What was your prediction, one of your predictions at the uh, beginning of the season regarding Ryan Day? That that your beloved Andy Reid would retire as Kansas City Chiefs coach and be replaced there's, by Ryan there's Day. There's an opening there. There's an opening there, maybe. See, I had the same thought as well. I, I Maybe Mark is doing, and I don't want to be fair to him talking about what's why he's doing his... Uh, or I don't want to be unfair You don't want to Buckeye explain to the Buckeye? Yeah, but you've done this, uh, similar things before with Michigan. I mean, it's been, sure, you've sure. had good, it's not like you d- had terrible, just totally devoid of reason, uh, devoid of reason, reasons for your analysis, but it is a little, coming from a Buckeye uh, guy like uh, him, as, as smart as he is, it could be a little bit of an emotional hedge, uh, but I don't, I don't know that for sure. I, I'm still going to go, and this is what I bet on with Michigan last year. You spent the entire off season. You're telling a lot of really talented young men that they are dog poop, and that they're not going to go anywhere, and that it's just going to be the same old over and over and over again. You tell that to the these these guys all off season. How do they respond? You've said before, and I think it was just last week, probably. Ryan Day doesn't seem like a rah rah motivator type of guy. Yeah, doesn't so then seem what like are a rally around the flag coach to me. Yeah, so then what are you looking at the built in self motivating factors? It's what I just talked about. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not buying, I'm not totally buying the self doubt quite yet. This is all going to hinge on whether, whether um, CJ Stroud is a tourist or if he's the guy. Okay? If he's the guy, he's going to say, over my dead body. We're going to give this all we got. If he's just a tourist, he's going to go turtle really fast, kind of like he did towards the end of the game against Michigan. So this is all going to hinge upon, hey, am I going to take this on my shoulders? We're going to lose this game over my dead body or not. So, again, really hard hitting hitting analysis. Uh, Can't hide your quarterback in college football. That's my, basically, analysis for this game. And I think, I've been on the record before, I do think Ohio State is going to spring the upset here. It's like it's like, I've I've talked about this with my one of my buddies who listens to this about uh, our beloved Chiefs. It, I see guys that have been with the Chiefs for years, like Travis Kelsey. He gets emotionally up for every single game. How do you keep doing that? And my buddy said, "Well, it's because they they win, but it's still like, how do you keep doing that?" I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Of course, in the NFL, you've got incentives and things built into your contract. And yeah, if you're winning, then you just want to win some more and you want to be the you know greatest that ever was. In college football, it has to be something else besides contracts and mm-hmm. things like that. And Georgia being here two years in a row, I just don't know. I just don't know where they are going to be at or if they're going to be at the same level that Ohio State will be at. So emotionally, motivationally. Um, I will say this, Georgia, every team with a more than a pulse that they played this year, they've they've uh, they've they've done pretty well against. They've also had a really close head scratching game against Missouri. So we'll we'll see. I am going with Ohio State, though. So you think we see a Michigan Ohio State rematch for the national championship? Yep. That 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 might be the most the highest rated college football game ever. If that were to happen. Not a surprise. Not a surprise. That, would that, not be a I mean, surprise. that would be incredible if that happened. Uh, at SoFi Stadium, by the way, out there in L.A. is where the national championship game is. Speaking of L.A., UCLA formally approved yesterday to move to the Big Ten. And so, promptly kicked Maryland's butt in their own gym yes. by 30 <laughs> points. Now you know why I'm saying stuff like, I don't know that uh, Wisconsin and Nebraska can be good at the same time. Yeah. I mean, that's... Things are going to change, you know, no doubt about it when, when you bring USC and UCLA here, for sure. All right, uh, that's going to wrap up our bowl game looks. We'll come back with our feedback of the week and our Twitter poll results next. All right, this week's Twitter poll results come courtesy of this question. Will we have, as Aaron is predicting, a Michigan-Ohio State rematch in the national championship game? 73% of you said no. 27% of you said yes. I think the odds are better than 27%. Yeah. I do think that. I voted for yes. I, I think it's probably like 35 to 45. I agree. Yeah, 35 to 40, I would say. Yeah. All right, that brings us to our feedback of the week. And for the second week in a row, it comes from our own Twitter feed, Aaron. We got to get a little basketball in here because by the time we come back here, we're going to already be into the second week of the Big Ten basketball season here. I, I mean, this happened last week in our league. 
Illinois beat a top five Texas on a neutral floor, then comes home and gets stomped by Penn State, which just lost at home to Michigan State, which just lost at home to Northwestern. Brother, it is going to be a crazy Big Ten basketball season, man. Like 13 and 7, 14 and 6 might share the Big Ten championship kind of basketball season. Let me just say this once Northwestern beat Michigan State at the Breslin. I don't, I get he's a great coach and he's made the NCAA tournament. Uh, seemingly more years than I've been alive. That's an overstatement, but you get what I mean. How, how do you lose to Northwestern at, at home at the Breslin? Now, maybe Northwestern is good this year. They've definitely uh, been and exceeded expectations. That's for sure. But that is, that is crazy. And yeah, this season is going to be absolutely nuts. I, I temper my expectations. That's, I mean, you've heard me now for weeks. Hey, a big picture look at uh, Big, Big Ten basketball. I'm like, let me know in a few weeks because things like this happen all the time. Like, Illinois looks great against Texas, gets stomped by Penn State, by the way. By the way, I had 100, over 137 points in that game. 137 and a half points. They had like 85 points at halftime. Oh, my. Game went under, and guess which leg of my parlay did not hit? The only one. Yeah, that Ugh. one. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a wacky season, and I don't really see any team so far that's capable of separating ex- itself except for maybe Purdue, except for maybe Purdue. But uh, See, I don't see a team because I don't think there is some, like, lockstep absolute top five, top 10 team in the preseason that just had an injury, hasn't had a stride yet, it's been inconsistent. I I think there's like 10 top 50 teams in this league. Yeah, and it's not, it's a weird season in in the sense that there's a lot of different styles in this league now. It's not all just ground uh, ground and pound inside. There are a couple teams that want to do that. Um, So the contrast in styles now it looks like Nebraska ball kind of looks more like what Fred Hoiberg did at Iowa State just a little bit. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting season to cover. I I just don't know whether that means that there's a lot of parity or a lot of mediocrity because there's a big difference there. I'm not sure. Well, we'll get into this more. But one thing I think to look for, I'm not sure how many top four seeds in the NCAA tournament there are in our league this year. Right, But I think that there might be 11 or 12 NCAA tournament teams in our league this year. Whether we get that many in or not, you know, doubtful. But, you know, I, 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 it's, it's going to be a crazy friggin' winner in this conference. Crazy. All right, that'll do it for us, not just this week. But that's a wrap for 2022. We will see you again in 2023. Hope all of you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Until we meet again, thank you so much for being a part of our show here and our continued growth here on Bigger 10. We appreciate each and every one of you. If you appreciate us, please like, rate, subscribe, five-star review, share, follow, help us to find more people just like you. And you can keep up to date on what we think about all things Big 10 and more by following us on Twitter at Bigger 10 as well. For Aaron McIntyre, I'm Steve Dace. We'll see you again next year. Thank you.